For tens of thousands of years, the salmon and steel have, have lived in the Snake River. For thousands of years, the Nez Perce have lived here. Well, over 200 years ago, Lewis and Clark came. It's only taken us modern man about 60 years to screw the whole thing up. Outfitting has, for generations now, provided opportunities for Idaho families to live on these rivers, places that are special to them. Everybody in these little communities all rely on salmon and steelhead dollars to get us through a full year. And without the fisheries, there's not anything else to fill in those gaps. To stand at Dagger Falls at the headwaters of the Middle Fork and watch Chinook salmon charging up over that large falls, it gives a guy hope. And you believe that the resiliency of these fish and their determination is going to overcome all these man-made problems. Center in 761, X-ray, Echo, Lewis, and Taylor, from the 1-2, cleared for takeoff. Today we're going to look over the lower Granite Dam. This is the first of four dams we're talking about removing. Steve, tell me about yourself. I was the Idaho Fish and Games fish passage specialist. So I spent my whole career inspecting these dams and working with various groups that manage the fish runs. So what's the issue with these dams? The scientific modeling that's been done shows that the only chance our wild fish have of not going extinct in the next decade is Remove the four lower snake dams. You're not going to get it there any other way. But what I hear is dam removal is the last chance to save the fish. How would you go about this dam removal? If you look down, you'll see the north side of the dam is not concrete. It's earth and gravel fill. If the dams were to be breached, you remove that earth and fill section, which we're looking straight down on to our right. You don't have to tear the concrete out. A hundred years from now, if the salmon all go away, you can reconstruct those dams just by refilling the earth and fill. All right, so you can mitigate some of the risks of removing the dams, but how does it help the fish? The fact that the water is not moving anymore delays their migration, which used to take just a week, now takes four weeks to six weeks. The dams themselves cause serious mortality by physically blocking their migration and leaving them with three avenues to get across, one to right through the powerhouse, which is highly lethal, or go through a bypass system, or go over the spillway. So essentially, it's a low-risk way to do what you can to save the salmon. Lewis and Tower, 761 X-ray Echo, or inbound landing. Yes, sir, in sight. Center in one X-ray Echo, cleared to land. In the agreement we made with the United States between the Nez Perce tribe and the United States, we agreed to cede land in exchange for a promise that we'd always have salmon returning in these rivers and returning for our people. We're losing species, and if we don't act right away, then we believe that they could go extinct. We believe that working together, that we'll be of one mind, and we all want salmon to come back.